Now the subject that I'm going to go into is called the Temple of the Most High and a new heaven and a new earth. Now I chose to do this subject, the Temple of the Most High, coming off the video that I just completed, the Temple of Baal or the Temple of Baal, showing exactly how, how there's open defiance against the Most High and trying to erect the temple or the arch of this temple to a satanic deity given homage on to Satan actually but erecting an arch to a temple of a satanic deity that's going to be made manifest throughout the four corners of the earth starting in America <coughs> and in London England New York City and London England so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the scriptures now and I'm going to show you the proper temple of the Most High I'm going to show you according to the scriptures the most high sanctuary and how this sanctuary will be again back in the kingdom of, of heaven in the kingdom of salvation once again now <clears throat> if you have your scriptures this may be a long video pull out your Bibles and follow along with me or take a pen and a pad and write the scriptures down and try to follow me to the best of your ability now the very first scripture we're going to go to is the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter, <coughs> Isaiah 65 and 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. <coughs> now, the prophet Isaiah says that the Most High is going to create new heavens. What does that mean? New kingdoms and governments are going to emerge on this earth under one soul and single authority. That's the, the authority that the Messiah is coming to reign under the, the guidance and the instructions of the Most High. <coughs> Do you understand? A new kingdom, all right, emerging all over the earth. All the kingdoms and the governments of this earth will be under one single authority, one single power. And that will be who the world calls Jesus Christ. In that day we will truly know his true name. And this earth will be governed under supreme righteousness for a thousand years. And then, of course, Revelation, the 21st chapter comes in. We'll go to that, you know, as the subject goes on. But a new heaven and a new earth symbolically represents divine righteousness in a divine kingdom. For, for his 1,000 year millennial reign will be total harmony total peace, total equality, and total justice. So it says, Isaiah 65 and 17, <coughs> For behold, I create new heavens, plural. These are representing the kingdoms and governments that will be on this earth in that day of his thousand year millennial reign. And a new earth, total righteousness, the people itself will be totally humble, totally righteous, totally meek, and totally in submission under the wills of the Messiah, which is manifested on this earth by the will of the Most High. Which the Messiah, who the world calls Christ, is coming to implement on this planet. And the children of Israel will be reigning with the Messiah under the 144,000 and the 24 elders. Okay? Go to my video, Kingdom of Heaven, and the second coming of Christ, and I give you more understanding of that. <coughs> and it says... And, form the, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem in joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor voice of crying. You see that? Jerusalem is going to be made holy. So that's shown you that the people over there in the land of Israel are not the true biblical and ethnic Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. And most I will, and I'll go into a topic in the future, giving you the, the sole uh, understanding of that according to biblical scriptures and biblical breakdowns. I'll prove it to you scripturally that the people over in the land of Israel are not the real Jews. They are not the children of Israel. They are not the Hebrew Israelites. Okay, in the prophecies of this restoration of the children of Israel does not apply to them. This is talking about the true Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes scattered throughout North, South, Central America, dispersed 
throughout uh, the four corners of the earth and up in Canada of Negro descent and Negro descent only. This is who this is talking about. And it's talking about Israel will never be mournful or sorrowful ever again. The oppression and the uh, suffering that we've experienced throughout the four corners of the earth will be no more. This is the glorious day that we are waiting on. This is why the Messiah had it uh, written down in the scripture through the mouth of the prophet telling us that he will create new heavens and a new earth. So the title of this subject is the temple of the most high in a new heaven and a new earth. Alright. Now, from there let's go to Isaiah 58. Isaiah the 58th chapter, we're going to read verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thee thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. Meaning he's going to restore health and strength unto us. Many of our people have been suffering health issues ever since we basically broke the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. We've been dispersed and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We have suffered a lot of health issues. As the prophecies of Deuteronomy, the, the uh, 28th chapter tells us, that plagues would be a, a, a cursing upon our people also. So health conditions are one of the avenues of the plagues and the curses that have come upon our people. But in this day, he's going to restore health back onto our nation. And it says, verse 11, Isaiah 58, verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. See that? And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like spring of water, <coughs> whose hearts, let me see, whose waters fail not. And they, sh and, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. You see that? Let's jump down to verse 14. And, and then shalt thou delight thyself in, in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Feed us with the heritage of Jacob. Meaning all the, bless, the blessings that the Most High told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will now be bestowed upon his children. You so-called Negroes, you black people scattered throughout the four corners of the earth of Negro descent, byproduct of the cargo slave ships. Up in Canada, North, South, Central America, throughout the Isles of the Caribbean and dispersed throughout the four winds of the earth. You comprise and make up the original lost and found 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. This promise is, is promised unto you. Okay, now let's go to Second Peter's. Let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter, excuse me, the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, didn't we just read that in Isaiah, the 65th chapter, verse 17? Here is the apostle Peter reiterating on what we just read in Isaiah, showing you that the Messiah himself already told the apostles what to look for. What to be, uh, what's to be in store? We look for that day of salvation. A day of rest where there will be no more suffering, no more mourning, no more captivity. Where we are made to suffer from. But everything will be manifested in pure righteousness. That's the day that we look for. That's the day that we, we pray that that day comes quickly. And we see by the events that are happening on this earth that this promise is coming more speedily and more rapidly than a lot of our people out here in the world actually think. This thing is going to happen regardless whether the people believe it or not. Now, to show you that the apostles already knew a data in which to look forward to and the blessings that would become, uh, become a reality, here is Matthew the, the, uh, Matthew the 19th chapter, we're going to read verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have there up therefore? And Jesus, now again we know his name is not Jesus. Be patient with me. We know the Messiah's name is not Jesus. Okay? His true Hebrew name will be revealed to us in that day. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me 
in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the, in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So here's the Messiah who the world calls Jesus Christ telling one of his top apostles, Peter, that you have followed me. You have placed your trust in me, given your whole soul authority over to me. There's a reward for that. So when the Son of Man sits in the throne of his glory, sitting upon that holy throne, you twelve, okay, will be sitting upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Twelve and twelve, the, tw the, the twelve sons of Jacob, which were the progenitors of the twelve tribes of Israel, and then you had the twelve disciples. Now we know Judas Iscariot was rooted out. That twelfth throne belongs to the Holy Apostle Paul, not Mahathis, because the Messiah called all twelve of his apostles. He did not call Mahathis. He was elected into the uh, apostolic ship. But the Messiah did not call Mahathis. He called Paul. So Paul will be sitting on that twelfth seat. Okay? So the apostles, along with the twelve sons of Jacob, make up the twenty-four elders. Okay, everybody got that. They will be sitting on twelve. That shows you that the nation of Israel will, will be ruling in the kingdom. The Gentiles will be there, but they're going to be under a period of submission under the children of Israel. But Israel is going to rule in the kingdom with the Messiah and his twenty-four elders, the twelve sons of Jacob, twelve uh, uh, disciples, twelve apostles, the 144,000, and then the rest of the residual nation of Israel. And all the, all the nations of the earth will be subservient under the children of Israel. But the Gentiles will be there. So to many Gentiles, don't get uh, frightened. Well, it's good for you to be frightened, but don't lose hope. You'll be there too. But this time, when the kingdom is established, it's going to be total righteousness. And the Gentiles are going to see an earth with no more war. No more famine, no more pestilence and diseases, no more strife, no more confrontation, no more racism, no more envy, no more jealousy, no more hate. The 12 tribes of Israel will rule this earth in righteousness and the Gentiles will be uh, in the vast glory and light of the children of Israel. And then they will know how to govern this earth in righteousness for that thousand year millennial reign. Now, let's go, let's read 29. And every one that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. The present world rulers, they're the ones that's going to be last. While the oppressed and the downtrodden shall be exalted, we shall be the first. Now, many who have forsaken the world and forsaken everything essential to you as a child growing up to the position that you are in today. If you've forsaken that for the Most High in Christ, you shall be re re rewarded and receive a hundredfold more blessings that will be bestowed upon you in the kingdom for following the Lamb, following the Messiah, following the Son of the Most High. Okay? And that is, and it says, and shall inherit everlasting life. That's Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 29. All right? That's the day in which we're looking for. Okay? That's the new heavens and the new earth. Now, let's go to the book of Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 132, verse 10. Now we're going to get into the temple of the Most High and how it was established and the reestablishing of it in the kingdom of the Most High. Since I did a video speaking about the satanic temple of Baal or Baal, that they want to erect the arch of it in every major city across the world, starting in New York City and in London, England. Let's show you the true temple of the Most High, the rightful temple, not the satanic temples that we see emerging abroad the earth today. Okay, Psalms one, Psalms one thirty-two, verse ten. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of the anointed. The Lord has swore in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. And if thy children will keep my covenant and testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne evermore. You see that? For the Lord has chosen Zion 
he has desired it for his inhabitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. You see that? So Zion in the city of Jerusalem is the Heavenly Father's chosen city, not Mecca, not Medina. Do you understand? Now the Muslims teach that Mecca and Medina are the holiest cities on earth. Okay, Mecca is the, the holy city, then Medina, then Jerusalem is the third holiest city in Islam to them. That's foolishness. The Most High said, in Zion is my desire. Zion, which is the holy mountain within the land of Israel, within Jerusalem, is the Heavenly Father's land. That's his chosen city, Jerusalem, and Mount Zion is where he's going to dwell when his temple is reestablished in his kingdom. The temple that Solomon was commissioned to build. So Mecca in Medina is not the holy uh, cities of the Most High. We're going to prove that as we go on. Now the scripture says that of the fruit of David's loins. Let's read it again. Verse 11. Psalms 132 verse 11. The Lord has swore in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body. Meaning of his sperm. By him having children throughout the generations. Will I set upon thy throne? I mean, he was going to raise up a king that would sit upon his throne. Now, we know that King Solomon was David's son. And he did reign under, uh, he, he did reign after David died. Solomon ruled all of Israel. But Solomon transgressed. We're going to touch on a little bit of that as we go on. About who, the, who this is actually talking about. It was talking about the Messiah. Ultimately, it, the Messiah is going to sit upon the throne of David. And he's going to rule Forever, even after the thousand year millennial reign, he merges his kingdom in with the Most High's kingdom. As we go on, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with a little bit of that. <coughs> if thy children will keep <coughs> my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever. Through David's lineage from Solomon and Solomon's sons and Solomon's sons, excuse me, and, and their sons and so on and so forth, if the sons or grandchildren of David, right, after Solomon would have obeyed, there would always be a, a child, a son of King David, you know, through the grandchildren, through the lineage from David up to this day, if Solomon would have obeyed and the men of Israel uh, who are descendants of David through his seed would have obeyed, there would have been king after king after king after king of the seed of David. But we know uh, Solomon transgressed, which brought uh, disobedience into the house of Israel and into the house of David also. We know this by reading the scriptures of those of us who have studied. We know this. Okay? Now, 13. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell. For I have desired it. So in the city of Zion, Jerusalem, I mean, the city of Jerusalem in Mount Zion is where the Messiah will sit upon his holy throne in that day of retribution when he destroys all the kingdoms and governments of the earth and sets up his holy, holy divine kingdom in Mount Zion in the city of Jerusalem, not Mecca and not Medina. Jerusalem is his holy city. All right. Now, let's go to Revelations, the 22nd chapter. Let's go to Revelations 22. To show that the Messiah is of the seed of David. Many of you know. Many of you don't know. Let's go into the scriptures. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Jesus. Again, we know his name is not Jesus. He will watch my video, A Word to the Hebrew Israelites, and I go all into it. Okay? I go into the name. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the, and the bright and morning star and the bright and morning star. I am the root and I am the offspring of David. So he's going to be that one that, 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 that David talked about in the, in the book of Psalms 132, starting at verse, uh, uh, verse 10 to, to 14. That's the Messiah. He will be sitting upon the, the throne of David. Okay, let's prove it. This is the new heaven and the new earth. And in his temple, this is where he will reign on a throne. Okay? So they want to build a satanic temple for a satanic deity. 
or the arch of it representing as a replica of the satanic temple of Baal or many of you pronounce his name Baal or, ba or, Baal or Baal but we all know who we're talking about but the true temple the true house of the Most High will be established in that day it will be reconstructed and the Gentiles are the ones that are going to build it I'm going to prove all that the Gentiles are going to be under Israel forever and forever all right here is Luke the, uh, the first chapter Luke the first chapter verse 30 and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for thou has found favor with God and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name which we know his name is not Jesus the he his Hebrew name but we're reading the scripture as it is Jesus he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. See that? Of his kingdom there shall be no end. After the thousand year millennial reign he merges his kingdom in with the Most High's kingdom. Watch my video. <coughs> kingdom of heaven. And the second coming of Christ also. Luke the first chapter verse 68 blessed be the Lord God of Israel so who is the most high the God of the power the most high who is he he's God of gods he's he's the ultimate Lord of Lords and God of gods we all know that though the most high is not a God we know he's the most high but if you had to put a label on it and say these other nations have gods who would be the ultimate God the God of Israel the most high all right so some of you simple people out there that are trying to find the smallest little thing to, 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 to engage into a kind of verbal warfare, which is foolishness, because you know what I'm talking about. Here is Luke, the, the first chapter, Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, through the lineage of King David. He was the root and the offspring of David. That's how he came of the house of David. And it says for us in the house of his servant David. So again that shows you that that false prophet Tiario is a liar. When he says that King David is in hell. Because King David is not in hell. Alright Tiario is a liar. When he said that King David is in hell. As, his, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. From, all, from the hand of all who hate us. And who hates us in America? Who has demonstrated their outright bitterness and contempt in their hearts for us? Go back and watch my video, Ku Klux Klan. And I show you why the Caucasian race has so much bitterness and contempt and hatred in their heart for us. Along with the Asians, the Arabs, many of the Africans... We have been despised and hated by every nation on this earth. The Messiah is coming to redeem and rescue us from all of those who hate us. Verse uh, Luke 1 and 70, 72. Luke 1 and 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore unto our father. Let's read that again. Verse 73. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. That he would grant us. Grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Thou shalt, thou, and thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go, prepare the, go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by remission of their sins so who did Christ die for many people say he died for all people he died for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel he died for the Hebrew Israelites that's who he died for go and watch my video chosen people and I prove it okay the Gentiles will be there but the Messiah is the Savior of Israel all right now let's get the prophecy on it let's get the prophecy on it Okay, let's go to the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 6, Isaiah 9 and 6, for unto us a child is, get, is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Remember when I when I tried to show you uh, in past videos where I talked about uh, a government shall be upon his shoulders from shoulder blade to shoulder blade? Remember I showed y'all that? A stern kingdom, just like your shoulder blades, okay, is a manifestation of your shoulders. And from shoulder blade to shoulder blade shall his kingdom be established. A stern, uh, uh, broad kingdom that could, cannot be shaped or moved out of its place. A stern kingdom, a powerful kingdom that nobody can shake this kingdom. And it says, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. He is God the Son. The Everlasting Father, he is one of our forefathers. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace, meaning he is coming to bring peace on this earth and bring peace to all of those Israelites that the world has oppressed. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. Mm. Let's read that again. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David up, up, and upon his kingdom. To order it, showing you it's going to be an order in his kingdom. He's going to have a structure and an order in his kingdom. Okay? Where am I? Okay. To establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob and has lit it upon Israel. He has lit it upon Israel by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit of men that are coming back to teach our people in this latter days of this earth age. That is how the Holy Spirit is lighting upon Jacob. Okay. Now, let's go to the book of Psalms. Let's go to the book of Psalms. 46. If you have a Bible, follow along with me. Here is the book of Psalms. Excuse me. We're going to go to the book of Psalms, the 47th chapter. And we'll start at verse 1. Follow along. This is the new heaven we're reading about in the new earth. Psalms 147 and 1. O oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The voice of triumph represents victory. The voice of victory shall we shout unto the Most High for now redeeming us and retrieving us out of this hell that we were in. All over the earth we've been oppressed and discriminated against, but now you have redeemed us. We have obtained triumph and victory. So now we rejoice in celebration and gladness, meekness and happiness that we are no longer under the thumb of our oppressor and our captor. But now we have salvation. We are free from that. All right. Verse two. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a terrible God, meaning he, his judgments are terrible if you disobey him. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under, under us. He sh this brother, he preaching this. How many of you are going to still continue to rebel against this? When I tell you that the Gentiles are going to be subservient and in submission under Israel. What, what did I just read? Psalms 47 and 3. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. So this is where the rich, rich powerful elite of this world, they're coming under us. The so-called Negroes. The black man is going to rule, but the black woman is going to be there with us, but she's going to manifest her rightful position as a woman. But fear not, black woman. All the women of all the nations are going to bow to you, and even the men of the other nations are going to bow to you too. The same way we bow to them on the slave plantation, they will now bow to you. And they will be your maids. They will be your handmaids to pick up after you. To, to cook for you. The same way you did for them on the plantation. You, they will now do for you. You won't even have to lift a finger. They will do all your handiwork. Straighten up your place of residence. Cook your meals. Watch and tend over our children. Your children. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a, a, a highly powerful executive woman 
of Caucasian origin or any uh, uh, ethnic uh, background. <coughs> now being subdued under you, a woman who was sitting in the ghettos, a woman who was suffering under all types of racial stereotypes and oppression, whips and in 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 uh lynchings. That will be no more. The people who did this to us will now be under us. Here it is. Psalms 47 and 3. For he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob whom he loved. Salah. The excellency of Jacob in which the father loved. Verse 7. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praise with understanding. God reigneth over the heathens. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong unto God, who is the Most High of Israel. He is greatly exalted. Look forward to that new heaven and a new earth. Because that day is coming. Alright. Now. Let's go to Psalms 135. Psalms. 135. Verse 4. Psalms 135 and 4. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great. And that our, our Lord is above all gods. The gods of all the nations, our power is greater than all of theirs. Look forward to that day. A power ruling on this earth that will give you and I supreme rulership on this earth. That's the new heaven and the new earth. Alright? Now, and when he sits upon the throne of his glory, all nations will be gathered unto him. All nations will be gathered unto us. Alright? This is not prejudice, you know, uh, racism. This is just showing you what the Bible is saying. Alright? So, you should be proud. You think the Most High is going to leave us in captivity and suffering and oppression like this forever? And what about the people who enslaved us? Shouldn't there be a judgment on them? You, they're supposed to get away with whatever they did? And there's no recompense on them? The scripture says, Unto me belongeth vengeance and recompense, and I will, I will requit my enemies. I will judge them. Alright? Here is uh, 2 Samuel. The seventh chapter. Second Samuel 7 and 1. Listen very carefully. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house. And the Lord had given him rest around about from all his enemies. Now this is talking about King David. That the king said unto Nathan the prophet. See now I dwell in, in the house of cedar. But the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king. Go, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David. Again to this liar, Tiario, King David is in hell. He blasphemed. Tiario, the scripture says, Every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account of it in the day. And that day you shall be justified, or in that day ye shall be condemned. Tiario is going to be condemned. Don't listen to this false prophet Tiario. All right. He says King David is in hell. He's a liar. All right. And go and, and go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Mm. Now this is this is what the Most High is telling the prophet Nathan or Nathan to go and talk to David, because the Most High wants something done. Six, whereas I have not dwelled in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. This was during the time of Moses when Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. There was no particular temple for the Most High to dwell in, where his ne where, not to dwell in, but where the children of Israel can come. Okay, as a temple, a house, a place of assembly, to, of worship. Alright? Now, we, there were tabernacles there, but he's talking about a, a, a structural uh, church. Not church, but a structural temple. Okay? A place of prayer. 
That's what he's talking about. Verse 7. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? So the Most High is saying to Nathan to go and talk to David and tell David this. Why have you not built me a house of worship, of worship basically? So, the ultimate house, the ultimate sanctuary, was the, the, the house that the Most High ordained Nathan to tell David to build for him. So you have these wicked people erecting an arch of a satanic temple. When the Most High, who is God of all gods, Lord of all lords, has commissioned his servant that you should build me a house. Okay, man is going out creating their own uh, 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 temples for their own paganistic and satanic gods. But I'm the true power. Build me a house. All right, and that order was given unto King David. Now, we're, we know that King David initially, after he sinned against the Most High, the Most High forgave him, but he couldn't build the temple because of his transgression against Uriah, which was Bathsheba's husband. But the, that glory was given unto Solomon. But that does not mean that King David is in hell. He repented from that. Okay? We all sin and all fall short of the glory of the Most High. However, the Most High gave that honor unto Solomon. Alright? Now you all can read that for yourself. But he still referred to David as his servant. And he also had so much love in his heart for King David that he gave the throne of his only begotten son to his, his son. He gave the throne of David to him as a, as a badge of honor. Okay, so it says, verse 8, now therefore, this is 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter, verse 8, now therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. So who is the Most High's people? The children of Israel. They and we, we are the children of Israel, we are the Most High's chosen people. Everybody got that. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou went, and, and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. David's name lives in infamy. It lives on from generation to generation to generation to generation. There will never be a king like King David uh, until the Messiah, of course, sits upon his throne. But, af, af, but uh, of actual physical, biological men. There'll never be a man like King David. Even Melchizedek was great. But the Most High said, this particular man did such a great work for me that his name will live on in infamy. Okay? That's the honor and the badge of, of, of victory that the Messiah will be sitting upon King David's throne. Okay? Verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more. This is a this is a future prophecy. Now we know according to that. Here's the prophet Nathan talking to King David. He's telling him this. Listen. But this is ultimately to exist in the future. That we will be removed and scattered abroad the earth. And dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth no more. So David already knew. Nathan already knew. The prophecies that were being implemented by the Most High to King David. So they already knew that Israel was going to go through a persecution. They knew. But as time went on to the present earth age that we are in and in the future, they knew that the kingdom will be established with Israel and Israel will be dispersed and scattered throughout the corners of the earth no more. Now Israel wasn't scattered and dispersed during the time of David and Solomon. But being that they were men of the Most High, Nathan already knew the prophecies because Moses already forewarned us in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. So they knew these, this day was inevitable. But the prophecy tells us that he was going to retrieve Israel from the four winds of the earth, wherever we are, and bring us back as a coalition, as a family, as a united body once more again, and never be to remove and be scattered, dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth ever again. So this is what he's telling Nathan to tell David. Verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for, for my people in Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness, the children of wickedness. Who's the wicked? Who enslaved us? Who persecuted us? Who sends drugs in our neighborhoods? Who has shot us down and beat us down with police clubs? 
Who has done these things to other nations also? Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more. And all the other nations are evil too. As before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when, thou, and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Now, King Solomon rose up after... David had passed on and died. But this is a future prophecy right here. Talking about the Messiah that shall emerge out of the loins of King David. He shall build an house for my name, King Solomon. And, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. The throne of his kingdom forever. Solomon is going to build this house. He was given that honor. Okay. The temple was destroyed. Babylon basically pillaged it under Nebuchadnezzar. It was rededicated under the rulership of uh, the Persians that allowed the children of Israel to return back into the southern kingdom of Judah and, re and uh, restore the holy vessels that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had stolen and the Babylonians and rededicated the temple back. Okay, let's speed it up. You get to the Apocrypha and you read about the, in the book of Maccabees how the Greeks desecrated under Antiochus Epiphanes. Who uh, destroyed the temple of the of the, uh, of the Most High, the Temple of Solomon? Sacrificed a pig on the altar and set up a, a image, an idol of Jupiter or Zeus, Zeus, in the Temple of Solomon, which is the Temple of the Most High, and desecrated it. Now, that was the abomination of desolation set up. Now, the Arabs have come in under the reign of the Ottoman Turkish Empire. Okay, they're not Arabs, but they follow Islam. Okay, they desecrated Solomon's temple again. Okay, even worse than it was already desecrated. And they, the, how I know they truly desecrated, which is another form of the abomination of desolation set up, is they set up the mosque of, the, of, the, the mosque of Omar, the Dome of the Rock, on the temple of Mount Zion. I mean, on the, on the mountain of Mount Zion where Solomon's temple once rested. The only thing, the only relic that remains there is the western wall or the wailing wall in which the so-called Jew goes to. Okay, that's the only thing that re remember uh, that's remaining of Solomon's temple. But that temple is going to be rededicated and rebuilt back for that thousand years of the Messiah's rulership. That's where he's going to sit at. Okay, so there are three the three desolations. Okay, Babylon desecrated it. Okay, the Greeks desecrated it, and then the uh, Ottoman Turkish Empire under Islam they desecrated it. Okay, now I believe, according to biblical prophecies, watch my video, Mark of the Beast, that temple over there, that, that uh, Dome of the Rock, that's going to be desecrated. I believe this. And then, I believe they're going to set up a temple for this false prophet, this Antichrist, right there. In the scriptures, and I gave you a matter of fact, go back and watch the video. And you'll see how he sits in the temple of God, showing that he is God. What temple is he going to sit in? He's going to sit in the temple in which they're going to erect for him. But that temple is going to be desecrated. Okay? Watch my video, Mark of the Beast. All right, verse 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, we're going to read verse 13. He shall build a house for my, my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him. So this shows you that's talking about Solomon right there, because the scriptures tell us that for God is not a man that he should lie, neither is there repentance in the Son of Man. We know that the Lamb, the Son of Man, was a, was a Lamb without spot nor blemish. He did not sin. He was totally perfect. So this was talking about Solomon. So is Solomon in hell? Let's read. 13. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay. The throne in the temple that Solomon built was desecrated, but it's going to be rebuilt back. And the Messiah will sit in that throne. On that throne, in that temple. That's how it's going to be established forever. I will be his father. Talking about Solomon now. And he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. I will chasten him with the rod of men. The, Ch Solomon himself did not get beaten by the Most High. Listen, just listen to what I'm saying. The kingdom of Israel was split into two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. 
so that he was chastised. He was chastised by the rod of men because there was confrontation between Israel, and then that's when the fall of Israel was inevitable. The Assyrian Empire came in around 722 uh, BC and sacked the capital city of Samaria in the northern kingdom, and then that began the downfall and the downtrodden of the children of Israel. He sinned against the Most High, so he was chastened by the rod of men, fell upon the head of his son, fell upon the northern kingdom, and then Israel from that day forward up until this very earth age, from the fall of Solomon, we are suffering captivity and oppression. Solomon caused that of his transgression. But listen, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him. Meaning the most high ultimately wanted Solomon to reign as king after David and gave him so much wisdom and so much wealth. So the Messiah will have that form of attributes of Solomon on his throne also. His innumerable wealth and innumerable wisdom. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul whom I put before thee. So is Solomon in hell? I don't know. I don't think so. The Most High said my mercy will be upon him. So although he sinned with these various women and the Most High was angry, I believe the Most High showed mercy on Solomon. And you never read any scriptures where it actually says in the New Testament that Solomon is in hell. Is in hell. But the scriptures tell you right here that Nathan is saying, I'm going to show mercy on him. David was showing mercy when he sinned against the Most High and had Uriah killed, which was Bathsheba's husband. But he's known for slaying Goliath and being the servant of the Most High, but he did an iniquity. He also uh, uh, did a census, took a census on the children of Israel, and that angered the Most High also. So we're, we're, we make mistakes at times, but he, his heart was still pure toward the Most High. Okay? Verse 16, In thy house, and Saul was rooted out. We know Saul was rooted out. Alright? And... Okay, 15, my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put before thee. Now, we know David was ultimately the one who the father chose in the beginning to build this house. All right, but Solomon received the, the honor of doing it. Okay, 16, in thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words... And according to all his vision, to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Okay? Verse 22. 2 Samuel 7 and 22. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what nation, and what one nation in earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem from a people uh, to himself and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible for the land before thy people which thou redeemest to, the, to thee from Egypt from the nations and their gods. What nation is so great like the children of Israel that the Most High stepped in? The Father of creation stepped in when his people was being oppressed. And delivered us from the false gods of Egypt. All you Egyptologists out there. Uh, you, guys are, you guys are lost man. Alright. The Most High is coming to destroy all these false. He's going to send the Messiah back to destroy all these false gods. Alright. For thou hast confirmed to thyself. Thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever. Forever. And thou Lord. Are become their God. The children of Israel is a people unto the Most High forever. Nobody can, can take that away from Israel. Israel is the Most High's chosen people and they will always be the Most High's chosen people forever. Doesn't matter what the pastor in the church says. Doesn't matter what the Islamic imam says. It doesn't even matter what these Caucasian uh, Jewish rabbis say about them being the true Israelites because they're not. We are. 
And we are the people that will be established with the Most High for all eternity. Forever. Nobody can take that. Once the Most High said it, it's law. All right. Verse 25. And, and now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever. This is the true temple that the Most High wanted established. Not no temple of Molech. Not the temple of Baal or the temple of Baal, however you want to pronounce the name. Or any of these other paganistic temples, Buddhist temples, and uh, whatsoever, whatsoever of these folk, the Egyptian gods, are establishing philosophies and re religions dedicated to their worship and their admiration, paying homage unto gods that are no gods, pure foolishness. The father tells King David through Nathan, "Build me a house." He gave him the order to build a house. Ultimately, there was going to be a house, a temple being built. Okay, but the Most High made it law. I mean, he wanted a place where his people can come to worship him. To pray unto him. Alright. 26. And let thy name be ma magnified forever. Saying, the Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies is the God over 12, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel will forever be God's people. So you Christians out there who try to say to Israel, you're a liar. The scripture says Israel will be his people and are his people forever. And, and let thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is, is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, has revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house. Therefore has thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now... O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore let now let therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. That was a prayer. Right here. That his house be established forever, not no temple of, of Baal, a temple of Baal. Because the Most High is going to destroy and melt that with fervent heat under, under the Messiah. Fervent heat shall all these temples be destroyed. So they, they're building something that is, that is nothing. Alright, let's move on. Alright, let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, the sixth chapter. Now we're speeding it up now. I already gave you all a little brief summary of what David did. He sinned against the Mo. He committed a, an act that the Most High wasn't pleased with. Then Solomon got the order to build the temple. But the temple still was going to be built. But this is the righteous temple that, that, that the Heavenly Father gave an order to build. He didn't give man the order to build the temples to Molech or to, to, uh, to, to Baal or to, any, to Allah. The Kaaba over in Mecca. He didn't give an order to build that. Because they are not God. And they for one. They are not his people also. He only gave the order to Israel. So there is a temple that he gave an order to. Not to the temple of Baal. Not to the temple or, or the Kaaba stone in Mecca. The so called sh sacred shrine in Mecca. He didn't give no order for them to build that. They built that with their own hands. I'm going to deal with that as we go on. Here is 2 Chronicles the 6th chapter. 2 Chronicles. 6 and 1. Then said Solomon, The Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built a, a house of inhabitation for thee. See, David had too much blood on his hands when he had Uriah killed and he took Bathsheba to, uh, to wife. So the Most High got angry and said, Okay, I'm going to remove that order from you and I'm going to give it to Solomon, your son. Alright, just to speed it up. But I have built a house of inhabitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has with his hands fulfilled that which he has spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house in. That my name might be there, neither choose I any man to be ruler over my people Israel. So, 
Mecca could not be the holy city. He said he chose no city in which my name was to be brought out, glorified. But I chose Jerusalem. I chose Israel. We're going to read it in a minute. Let's read. Verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. So where, where do you get the holy city of Mecca is where uh, 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 the Most High gave a uh, commission for his name to be built in the Kaaba over in Mecca. That is a lie. Abraham and Ishmael did not build the Kaaba. Abraham was loyal to this, this God, this power, and promised Abraham an everlasting covenant through his seed, Isaac and Jacob. Not Ishmael. Ishmael was cast out. So how, how did he go to Mecca and build the temple for, for uh, Allah? That's a lie. That's false doctrine. And that book, the Quran, is a false book. Alright? That is a lie. Verse 7. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord, God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it was in thy heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well in that it was in thy heart. It was in his heart. And the Lord wanted that. Ultimately, it's the most high that works upon the minds of man. So if it was in David's heart, it was still the, the plan of the most high because the most high works on the minds of men to do his will. So David said, I want to build a house for the, for the Mosai. The Mosai actually told Nathan to go tell him this, but it was in David's heart. Who put it abroad, David's heart? The Mosai did. It is the Mosai that works upon the minds of men. All right. Verse 9. Now withstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy sons, oh, which shall come forth out of thy loins. He shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore has performed his word that he has spoken. I am risen up in the room of David my father and, and I am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built the house for the name of the Lord of Israel and I and in it have I put the ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel now these lying Ethiopians say that the ark of the covenant is in the capital city of Ethiopia I believe it's called Aksum and it's in a, and it's in a church somewhere that is a lie the Ark of the Covenant is not in Ethiopia. Alright? That is a lie. Alright? Those Ethiopians, there's many of our people that are over there. But a lot of these people are liars. And they're not uh, uh, Israelites. They're Hamites out of the Sea of Cush. Alright. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings. We're going to wind it down in a few. Let's go to 1 Kings. Actually... Let's go, yeah, let's go to 1 Kings, the 8th chapter. 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, verse 26. 1 Kings 8 and 20. Now we're going to continue to reiterate on the prayer that King Solomon made. Now all the Gentiles, all you other races of people that believe in this Bible and believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, or how you refer him, is your King, Lord, and Savior. Now let me say something to you, all you Hebrew Israelite organizations out there. Let me say something to y'all. You cannot take the Gentiles' faith. These people, as we just read. Okay? Then we're going to go into deeper precepts on this. The Gentiles are going to be in the kingdom. You can't take their faith away from them. You cannot go to an Asian man or a Caucasian man or an African man or a woman and tell them not to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't. Because the Most High already called them. He already called a remnant of the Gentiles. But they've been called to serve Israel in the kingdom. And to serve him, ultimately, the Messiah, but to serve Israel. As a reward for what their people have done to us, now it shall rest upon them. That reconciling shall fall upon their head and rest upon their head. So, they're believers. They accept the Lord Jesus Christ and they'll die for him. Good. We are to trouble them not. Harass them not. If they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they believe he's the Messiah of Israel. And the Gentiles do, will be justified through their faith that they will be in the kingdom also. Celebration. Then we will teach them in the kingdom the proper and precise order. 
They're going to be in sub submission under Israel. But yet they will know. They will know the truth. And we, Israelites, Israel light of the Most High will shed that wisdom onto them. That is our job. Remember the scripture says we will be kings and priests. Kings deal with men. Priests deal with the Most High. So the Gentiles will learn the truth. All right, they will be there in the kingdom too. And this is what Solomon is telling you. So I don't care about you one West Israelite groups coming out of that mentality. The Gentiles are going to be there. But they're going to be under Israel, but they're still going to be there. All right. Uh, 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, verse 26. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou speakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on earth? On the earth, behold, the heaven and heaven, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built. Yet have thou respected unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. That thy eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there. That thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. In that day we will know the name of the Father. We will know his true name. I'm not listening to these other Israelite groups. Ahiah. Yahweh. Yehovah. Jehovah. Yehovah. Yah. We will truly know the name of the Messiah in that day. I mean the Most High in that day. I put my faith in that. And then that day, his name will be ultimately exalted and praised. And given homage on to, along with the Messiah. Go back and watch my video, Word to the Israelites, Hebrew Israelites. Now this prayer right here will be amplified in that day. Because we will truly know his name. And the Messiah said it out of his own mouth. I will teach you the name of my father. And plant the name of my father in your mind. In your forehead. And then I will teach you my new name. So those names will be implemented in that day. Put your faith in that. I don't trust these One West guys. Listening to that false prophet Ari. Later for them One West guys. Alright. Verse 30, and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Verse 33, this is 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, verse 33. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin. This is when Solomon was building this temple. He was making this prayer. This prayer is to uh, be relevant in the kingdom in the 1000 year millennial reign. Also, it was to be relevant when he first erected the temple. So if any Israelites was being oppressed throughout the world. He knew, Solomon already knew, because he had more wisdom than any man on this earth, that Israel eventually was going to go into captivity, because the prophecies of the book of uh, Deuteronomy said so. Okay, whoever oppressed the children of Israel, let them turn back to the temple, and make homage and prayer unto the Most High, that he hear their prayers, and deliver them from their captivity, from their punishment. We face the east. Now, the temple is not there anymore, only the Wailing Wall, the Westing Wall is there. But if you choose... To face Jerusalem, I believe in doing that. Throwing the incense up and making prayers. The frankincense and making prayers. I believe in doing that. And other brothers that have come over to my house, we used to do that. I don't study with those brothers anymore, but we used to do that. Face the east if that's how you feel. Face the east. We know the sacred temple is not there anymore. But if you choose still to pray to the holy city and face the holy city, that's up to you. That's a personal decision. All right? But look, this is when the temple was first being built and being erected. <coughs> 34. Let's actually uh, 33. And make supplication unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive thy sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou givest unto thy fathers. Uh... 38. 
What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven and do thy dwelling place, and forgive and do and give every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou, only knowest the hearts of all the children of Israel. See, that's how the Most High already knew David wanted to do this in his heart. Is this him that worked upon the minds of men. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou givest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger, Gentile, that is not of thy people. See that? You stupid Israelite groups out there. Gentiles talking about Israelites living in a Gentile state. Man, be quiet. That's that stupid R.E.I. and his dumb One West teaching. And all you stupid Israelite groups still following that Ariyah's teaching. You guys are foolish and stupid, man. Alright? I don't listen to nothing from that false prophet Ariyah. This is what the scripture says right here. 1 Kings 8 and 40, uh, 41. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. That represented the, even that Ethiopian eunuch who was coming up to Jerusalem to, uh, to come to the High Holy Day. And the Apostle Philip saw him, asked him what you were reading, breaking down to him the book of Isaiah, long story, just summing it up. And then they went and was baptized. So the Gentiles can be baptized. I said you can't marry them or bring them into the sanctuary of the Most High. But all the nations are going to hear the truth. So they're praising our power. They're praising the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The power of the 12 tribes of Israel. They're serving our power. All right, and that's a beautiful thing. And if they serve our power, then they wouldn't be as corrupted and as wicked as they are on this earth if they were serving our power, all of them collectively as a body, as a nation of people. There, would, there wouldn't be the hell on this earth today if they were all serving the Most High. All right. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for thy, for they shall hear of thy great name. You see that. The Gentiles shall hear of the Most High's great name, great righteousness, his power, his majesty, the honor that has that been bestowed upon him by the marvelous and miraculous things that he has done for the children of Israel. The Gentiles would hear that also. All right? So you can't shake their faith. I don't care how much you scream at them on the street. You can't shake their faith. They believers in the Most High and they believers in Christ. That's beautiful because in the kingdom they will be taught the total truth and they will be obedient. All right? For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm. You see that? The miraculous thing that Israel experienced. The Father brought us through that. The Gentiles will hear. That's why he allowed the strangers to sojourn with Israel. Those Gentiles coming out of Egypt. That mixed multitude. So they could see and behold it with their own eyes. And then spread the rumors of what they saw to the rest of the world. That everybody would fear the Most High of Israel. That's why he allowed the strangers to come out of Egypt and sojourn with the children of Israel so they could see the things that the Most High did for Israel by witness themselves. You stupid One West camps. And I'm sorry keep people say, how come you always call people? They're, they're stupid. Their doctrine is foolish. Alright? This is what the scriptures say. They would be a witness unto it too. V verse 42. For thy shall hear, for thy for they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward his house. The Gentiles would do that also. They can't come in the sanctuary, but they can make homage of prayer unto it. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as they as do thy people Israel that they might know that this house which I have built is called by thy name now they want to build a satanic temple to Baal and have all these people coming from all over the earth paying homage unto this satanic uh, temple everything the Heavenly Father does in righteousness you know Satan tries to duplicate it and do wickedness Trying to get the people to worship him. But here's King Solomon saying, if the Gentiles, other races, and other nationalities of people come before this temple and make homage in prayer, hear their prayers. So he is a just God. He is not a God of, of hatred uh, to those who, who, who serve him and who believe on him. 
Yeah, the scripture says the Gentiles unto me are nothing and they are a spittle. And Israel is the only one he truly acknowledges in his eyesight. That's um, Amos the third chapter, verse 1 and 2, down to 3. Okay, we know that. But the Gentiles, the Father said he's going to call out a remnant of the Gentiles that shall be called by my name. We're going to get it. The Gentiles will be in the kingdom. And if they made prayer and supplication unto the Father, he would hear them. He is, he is the God of justice. For all nations of the earth will serve him. Through his Son also. That's why the Muslims try to get all races of people to serve Allah. Dupl everything God does in righteousness, the Heavenly Father, the Most High of Israel, Satan through different gods that um, he may have the man calling on. It's all satanic worship to get the people of the earth to serve him instead of serving the Most High. So this satanic temple that they want to erect around the earth starting in New York City and in London is to gather people to this satanic new world order, this satanic new world deity, this satanic new world doctrine. Baal was the god that represented immorality, sexual immorality, impurity, sacrifice, Bohemian Grove, Moloch, sacrifice and children in effigy, child sacrifices. These are the gods that these people praise, but the Most High is telling us that when he established this thing back on this earth, it's going to be total righteousness. They won't have the power to do what they're doing on this earth anymore. The Most High is going to shut all that down. That's why they're creating all this chaos on this earth now. All right. Verse 43. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth thee for. That's the God of justice. That all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do they, thy people Israel. And that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemies, whatsoever thou shalt send them and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city, Jerusalem, which thou hast chosen and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. It's a powerful prayer that Solomon prayed to the Mosai. You can't take nothing from, from this Bible, man. Nah, that stupid temple you're trying to erect, man. Come on, man. The Most High is going to... He's going to destroy every form of abomination... And idolatry. Understand that. Alright. Now. Let's go to Isaiah. The precept off of what I just read. In 1 Kings the 8th chapter. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. And I'm sorry if I seem a little animated. in you know. Because normally I'm more laid back. But a subject like this. You know. Really had to come out. The most high really spoke to my heart in doing this subject. Okay, so I apologize if I got a little, you know, animated, you know, but I'm just trying to bring this out to the people. Here is uh, Isaiah 56 chapter verse 1. Thus says the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. Didn't I just say that the Most High was a God or a power of, ju of justice? Hmm. Thus says the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. This is the new heaven and the new earth we're talking about. The temple of the Most High and a new heaven and a new earth is the title of this video. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on this, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. That will be manifested in the kingdom too. As well as us trying to do the best that we can today, in this earth age, on earth, the Most High knows our heart. But in the, that day, everything will be totally righteous in that day. Okay? Three. Neither uh, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Okay, verse three. Neither let the son of the stranger that joineth himself to the Lord speak, saying that the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath 
and choose the things to please me and to take hold of my covenant. If the Gentiles do according to the Bible, written from cover to cover, book to uh, book, the book, from Genesis to the Apocrypha, the, the books of the Apocrypha, all the way to the, the New Testament, the Most High will show favor onto them. Now, they're not Israel. They're not Israel. So Israel has the right inheritance, but the Gentiles can say, let not the Father separate me from his people, just as a stranger sojourned with Israel after coming out of Egypt. So there was laws on how the, how the Gentiles were to be treated by Israel. Right? Now, they know the Gentiles are going to serve Israel. They will. But, they're going to be in a place of servitude under Israel. True. But, they will be in the kingdom where the Father will then pay homage unto them also. Meaning, he's going to do for them as he do. he's going to exalt us. But, they're not going to be impoverished. Okay? If, if, they, if they believe on the Most High and they serve him and they bow to him, the Most High will provide for them too. He's a God of justice. And a God of, of equality. Israel is always going to be above because we are his chosen people. But he's going to provide for them too. When manna was provided for the children of Israel to eat. Did not the strangers eat also? When water was, was provided for the children of Israel in the, in, the, in the wilderness. Did not the strangers drink also? When the, when the high holy days were established. And the father told Israel how to uh, pay homage unto his to him during these high holy days, did not the, the strangers, the Gentiles that was among Israel, did they did they not learn the high holy days? It's not our fault today that many of them transgress and disobey, but these ones obey. All right, let the Most High deal with the wicked ones and the rebellious ones out there. Let the Most High deal with them. All right. Verse 4, for thus says the, oh, I already read that, let's read it again. For thus says the Lord unto the eunuch, keep, that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Okay, verse 5, even unto them will I gather in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of the sons and of the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now. Let's go to uh, Revelations, the 11th chapter, to show you that they will be at the house, when it says in the house, but this is the actual order where the Gentiles are going to be. Revelation, the 11th chapter, verse 1, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God. This is the new temple, the new temple that's going to be erected, where the Messiah is going to sit, and the altar where... And the altar and them that worship therein. The children of Israel will be there inside the temple giving homage and praise unto the Messiah. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall, be, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Forty two months represents the 1260 days and three and a half years. Times, times, and dividing of times, I believe that's the prophecy in the book of Daniel. Many Israelites don't have that breakdown or believing because they don't accept the one world governmental dictator, the Antichrist, that will make a peace agreement with the state of Israel and the Arab Federation. And okay, in the middle of three and a half weeks, he breaks it. I mean, the seven years, excuse me, he will make a seven year peace agreement. Uh, he shall make a covenant for seven years, break it in the three and a half years. And the city shall be trotting down by the Gentiles. They go to war. That's Armageddon. That's prophecy. See, these guys, they came out of that One West Doctrine. So, they, they, they said that's three and a half years. is talking about uh, truth coming out in 1969. And some say 1970. And that represents a period of 350 years. So I'm not even going to go into that stupid stuff. Because their teachings are foolish. Alright? He's talking about the one world governmental dictator making a peace agreement with the world, the Arab Federation and the state of Israel for seven years. In the middle of the seven year tribulation period, okay, he breaks the peace. Three and a half years represents that. Okay. That's when the war begins. Armageddon. The scripture says when they shall say peace and safety, right, then the sudden destruction comes. When they shall say peace, peace. That's when destruction comes. Then he breaks the peace agreement. Alright. 
Now, many of you may not understand that or accept that, but that's the breakdown. All right. Now, let's go to the book of Acts as we begin to wind down. I knew this was a long video. All right. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Let's show you some more about the Gentiles. They're going to be there. All right. But go and watch my video, The Second Coming of Christ and the Kingdom of Heaven, and I'll show you the role and position of the Gentiles in the Kingdom. All right. Here is Acts, the 15th chapter, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that, I, that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. The Gentiles are going to hear it and they're going to believe too. That's why you have so many people of other nationalities telling you, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I don't care what you say. You can't shake them. I don't care. GMS, ISUPK, Israel United in Christ, coming after them and telling them you can't believe on Christ. Christ did, no, Christ did die for Israel. And you, they, we have to show them that. But you can't shake their faith in him. See, they were, they were Gentiles that were called by his name to serve us in the kingdom. Listen. A lot of these Gentiles are going to be annihilated and eradicated on the second coming of the Messiah. But there will still be some of them that believed on him. He's going to save those ones so they could be in the kingdom for us. So think on that note. All right. Let's jump down to 14. Simeon, who is Peter, had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. You see that? You can't argue with the Oh, this is talking about Israelites living in a Gentile state. I mean... That's that stupid One West doctrine. All right. This Gentiles to take out of them a people by a people for his name. That's uh, Acts the 15th chapter verse 14. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up again. You see that? The tabernacle of David. Israel will be united together as one body and and the family of Judah will definitely be risen up and the temple is going to be erected again in his 1000 year millennial reign okay that the that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called says the Lord who doeth all these things who doeth all these things know unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which are among the Gentiles are turned to God. See that? The Gentiles that are turned unto the Most High and want to serve Him in purity to them that believe on Him. Now, we can tell them when they're making mistakes, but leave them alone. Now, we can tell them the prophecies of the Bible and different things like that when they're going off. You let them know when they're going off because we are the beacon of light. We are the salt of the earth. And the Gentiles are going to be set up to learn under us. Just as we taught them in the wilderness. They learned the laws. We have to teach them again. Know unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which are among the Gentiles are turned to God. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. And from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. You see that? That they abstain from idols. Things strangled. Killing things with their bare hands and then eating these things. And also things sacrificed to blood. By blood. Okay? And from things strangled and from blood. When they do blood sacrifices and different things. Like you're supposed to tell them that. But they're not in the most side of those people who do that. But you're supposed to tell Gentiles what they're doing wrong. But if the Gentiles are believers and they, and they abstain from these different things, they're going to be in the bosom. They're they going to be in the bosom of Israel. Yeah, Israel going to rule over them, Isaiah the 14, chapter, verse 1, on down. But they're still going to be there. The Most already said it. He called out a name. Now, let me prove it to you. Now, I'm going to shut it down after a few scriptures because I know this was a long video. And I'm going to shut it down in a minute. But let me just show you a few precepts. All right. Now, this ain't talking about Israelites 
living in a Gentile state of mind. This is talking about true, after, after, actual Gentiles. Isaiah 60 verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. See that? They will come to our light. The light that we bestow upon them is real light. We will teach them the real light of the Most High. So they shall come to our light. And the Gentiles, this is uh, Isaiah 60 and 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from, from, from far. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. You see that? Then thou shalt see and, fl and flow together. And thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be covered unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Man, you're going to be so excited. That you can't even believe. This is the new heaven and the new earth he said he's going to create also. You can't believe the forces of the Gentiles that the Father is going to force them to flow into our kingdom. The riches, the economic prosperity, the wealth. Everything that they have shall flow into our kingdom. Verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. You see that? After the Third World War and the destruction, the temple is going to be erected also. And the Messiah is going to sit there. But they're going to build it. And they're going to build up our walls. They're going to rebuild the land of Israel after the Messiah destroyed it in the Third World War. But they're going, to be, they're going to be building all over the earth. Just like they made us build, we're going to make them build. And the sons of thy strangers shall build up thy walls, and their, and their kings shall minister, meaning their kings, their rulers shall be servants unto us. Unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. You see that their kings themselves even may be brought. So your rich, rich, powerful men that are ruling this earth today means jack. Means absolutely nothing. The wealth and the prosperity that they have shall flow unto us. And we're going to be so innumerably wealthy, just like all these other nations are wealthy, man. You can't even fathom in your mind the wealth that you're going to receive. You're going to be walking around, let's say if I can put a, a type of title on it, like a billionaire or a trillionaire, like these Arabs or multi-trillionaires with the oil. You have international bankers that are billion and trillionaires. We're going to be that day. But the whole nation of Israel is going to be that way. We're going to be the wealthiest people on earth. Twelve. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. You see? The beauty, the beautify, to beautify the place of my... Did I not tell you that the Gentiles are going to build up the Messiah's temple? Who built Solomon's temple? Hiram Abyss? Hiram? Was it the king of Tyre that was involved in helping Solomon to build the temple? Isaiah 60 and 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet Glorious. I mean, it's going to be a beautiful structured temple, sanctuary, house of prayer that the Gentiles are going to contribute to building. You see how they're master builders with technology today, architecture today. They will use that same skill, technique of building to build up our kingdom. The sons also of, oh, oh, let me, I, I skip past three, uh, 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. This is Isaiah 60 and 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. And those nations shall be utterly wasted. Meaning, if any nation say, we're not serving y'all. This is the prophecy. They will utterly waste away and they will perish. They will serve us. Alright, let's jump down to verse... 14. The sons also of them 
that afflict thee shall come bending unto thee in all that all they that despise thee. You see that? The Ku Klux Klan. Now, you know, they're going to be destroyed, but let's just say those that exist in that day. Aryan Nation, Neo-Nazi, and I hope that members of the Ku Klux Klan, Aryan Nation, Neo-Nazi skinheads, BOAB, Brotherhood of White Aryan Brotherhood, uh, American Nazi Party, well, whoever, whatever white supremacist movements uh, may be watching some of my videos, because since I did that video, Ku Klux Klan, I know some of them seen it. Okay, I hope you're watching this particular segment of the video. Listen carefully to this. Isaiah 60 and 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee. All the murder and killing that the police department and white supremacist movements and things like that people have done to us. You are the ones who have afflicted us. So it says the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee. The city of the, of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. That's where they're going to be at. Bowing to. This isn't black supremacy or racism. I'm only reading what the Bible is saying. But this is, this is divine justice man. The scripture says that they reap what they sow. They have done evil unto us. Now in tune. You know they, what they've done to us may be recon, uh, recompensed. That's divine justice. It's not racism. Fifteen. Whereas thou has been forsaken and hated. Whereas we have been forsaken and hated. So that no man went uh, through thee. I will make thee an eternal excellency of joy of many generations. Wow. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. To preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 4. All right. And they shall build the old wastes, and they shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. The strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your, your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. That's right. And ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. In their glory shall, shall ye boast yourselves. Or I'll stop right there. So, we're going to eat the forces of the Gentiles, and the Gentiles, you're going to be in a position to where um, we are now. But you'll still be in the kingdom. But this is basically, now go to my video, Kingdom of uh, Heaven and Second Coming of Christ, to get more breakdown and understanding of that. Alright, now we're going to speed it up, pull a few more scriptures, and we're going to let it go. Alright. Let's go to uh, Hebrews, not Hebrews, I don't want to go there first. Let's go to the book of Acts. Alright, now you'll have some Christians that'll say, well the Heavenly Father does not dwell in temples made with hands anymore. Some Christians will say that. Alright, let me, let me explain, because I knew some people might try to come with that. Uh, Acts 7, mm, let's start at verse 45. Acts, the 7th chapter, verse 45, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophets. Heaven is my, my throne. And, and uh, earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? Says the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? Now technically. Technically we know the Heavenly Father created everything. So what truly, truly could you actually truly build for him? Nothing. Because he's the creator of everything. But this was an act of solidarity of faith. 
by establishing a, a temple for him was a, was a house of I mean was a place of solidarity of faith. Also, let's get some more spiritual aspect of the temple that was erected by Solomon to build for the Most High, and that the Messiah will be sitting in that temple in his thousand year millennial reign. Okay, since the Most High already knew what was in David's heart, okay, I, build build me this house that my people and even the Gentile nations that serve and believe on me can make homage of me and prayer unto me. This would be the sacred house that I give permission to be built. I did not give them permission to build uh, the temple of Baal or Baal or however you want to pronounce it. I did not give them permission to build the Kaaba or the Prophet's Mosque in Medea, um, Medina or the Kaaba over in Mecca. I did not give them the permission to build a Buddhist temple, a Buddhist sanctuary. I did not give them the p p permission to build the Vatican or these Catholic cathedrals throughout the earth. Now, I gave permission for my sacred house to be built. That Solomon would have the honor of building that. I didn't give them, I didn't give them that permission. So that's how I dwell in temples truly not made of hands. Because I didn't give them permission. Therefore, my spirit does not dwell in any one of these temples that are being built and erected by the hands of man. The hand of man that I erect, that I gave permission to was Solomon to build this temple. And the Gentiles in that 1,000 year millennial reign will re-erect this temple that will be built onto my son in that day. But I did not give them the, the, the order to, to create the cobblestone to, to the Prophet's Mosque in Medina. Uh, uh, the, the, Vat the Vatican. Catholic cathedrals. I didn't give them the order to build Jewish synagogues. I didn't give them that order. Here is Jeremiah 7 and 4. Trust ye not in lying words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. You see that? These are lying words. The Islamic master says, this is the house of the Mosai. Okay? Uh, the Catholic cathedral says, this is the house of the Mosai. And the Christian church says, this is the house of the Mosai. These three monotheic religions. Judaism is not all over the earth as far as other races of people practicing their Judaism. No. That's what they practice. Okay, the Kabbalism and foolishness like that. But Christianity, Islam, and Catholicism are the three monotheic religions. I, the Most High didn't give them the permission to create those uh those temples. All right. So when the Most High says, you know, He does not dwell in temples made with hands, we know the whole earth belongs under Him. Truly, what could you build from that He doesn't already own? But He gave Solomon an order through his father David. Build this house for me that my people can make prayer unto me and to all those who serve the God of Israel. Pray, you can make prayer and homage unto this house that I said to build. But I don't dwell in these other houses. Alright? Give me Acts 17. Sorry this is so long. I'm trying to speed through these. If I make a mistake, you know, quote a scripture wrong or something like that. If I've done that uh, in the beginning of the video, towards the end of the video... Up to now, I apologize. I'm just trying to get through this. So, But you all know where I'm going with this. That's why I tell you, pull out a pen and a pad in your Bibles and write scriptures down. If I slip up and make a mistake here or there, you know, at being a human being, a slip of the tongue, then you can say, okay, well, he made a mistake there, but I, I feel where the brother's going at. I felt where he was trying to lead us at. All right, so we're human beings. Sometimes we're going to slip up. David made a mistake. Solomon made a mistake. <coughs> Paul made mistakes, <coughs> the apostles made mistakes, made mistakes, the Messiah had to correct them. So we're human beings, so at times we're going to make mistakes. But you hear what I'm trying to show y'all, alright? Never forget that. Here is Acts 17 and 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He don't dwell in these other sanctuaries that have been created by the hands of man. His spirit dwelt, you know, in the temple that he told Solomon to erect for him. Not in these other religious institutions throughout the world. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything. You see that? Seeing he giveth to all life, and breathe, and breath, and all things, and has made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on the face of the earth, that he has Determine the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after, after him and find him, though he be not far away from every one of us. All right. So we know ultimately the Most High uh, is the creator and the architect of all things. We know that. 
So what house can you truly build him? But his spirit don't dwell in these other religious institutions. His spirit and vibration dwell in the temple that he told Solomon to build for him. He, he gave Solomon an order. Did he give uh, the Vatican the order? Did he give uh, the Muslims the order? Did, did he give any of these other... He said, where did he tell you an order was set up at? Where did he tell... What did I just show you? What order was given to Solomon to build that house in Jerusalem? He said, I had found no city that to bear my name in. Bam. Set it up in Jerusalem. I have chosen Jerusalem in the land of Israel to be where my name and my sanctuary shall be. And that's where the Messiah is going to be at in the day when he sets divine rulership on this earth. Let me get through these real quick. All right. Basically, I've said everything I needed to say. Let me pull two scriptures and uh, I'm going to shut it down. I don't want to make this too long. First, let's go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 16. By now, they desire a better country that is in heavenly, where, that is heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. God is not ashamed to be called their God. Powerful. For he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. You see that? Synonymous, synonymous of Abraham opening up, uh, offering up his only begotten son because Ishmael was cast out in the eyesight of the Mosai. He didn't acknowledge his, uh, Ishmael. Islam can, can possibly not be the truth because Ishmael was, was basically cast out and the Mosai didn't even recognize him. That's why he said, Isaac is your only begotten son. Sacrifice him. Then the Lord stopped Abraham. He wanted to see his devotion and his faith. Okay, then the Most High offered up his only begotten son to die on the cross for our iniquities, transgression, and sin. Okay, now, I don't want to get into no rivalry with any other Israelite groups, but the GOCC leader, let me just say this, said that, you know, in the ancient Greek, um, <coughs> there is no scripture saying that the Messiah was crucified on the cross. All right, it's in the 1611 translation. Okay, but in the ancient Greek, they say it's not there. I don't believe that, but let's just say it is. All right. When he was crucified on the cross, the cross symbolically represented supreme dominant execution. This is what the Romans used to uh, it, it extract uh, uh, supreme punishment. Today we have the death penalty, you know, the electric chair, well, you know, the lethal injection. The cross was used to torture and to bring punishment upon severe criminals or who they deemed severe criminals. The Most High had that happen purposely because the children of Israel was dispersed and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So when they put a thorn, of, a, 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 thorn a crown of thorns upon his head and his, his blood was shed, that represented the Israelites in the north, scattered throughout the north. They nailed his feet to the, to the cross. Blood that was shed from his feet represented the Israelites in the south. His hands nailed on east and west represent the Israelites scattered in east and west. From the four corners of the, of the earth, his blood purified us from the four winds of the earth. So, I don't listen to these other guys. So, I just wanted to bring that out. Alright. So, the city that he, uh, for he has prepared for them a city, when the Messiah said, I go away to prepare, uh, to, to prepare for you where I am, there you should be also. That was the new Jerusalem that will be coming down in Revelation, the 21st chapter. That's the Heavenly Father coming down and then the, the Messiah merges his kingdom in with his Okay, Revelation 21, Revelation 20 and 21, proving that's the new Jerusalem. So that proves again that Jerusalem is the holy city. All right, after his 1,000 year millennial reign is up. Now, here is uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Let's get verse 22. But ye are, Hebrews 12 and 22, but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to and to an innumerable company of angels. Proven again. The holy city is Jerusalem. Not Mecca. Not Medina. And the holy city is Jerusalem. As I said. And the holy temple. The sanctuary will be set up in Jerusalem. Not in New York City. Not in London. Not in. The holy temple will. Be in Jerusalem. And that's the holy city of the Most High. And his sanctuary. His temple will be there. Alright. Revelation. Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven 
and the first earth were passed away. Let's talk about this present earth age that we're living in today. And there was no more sea. Okay, the sea symbolically represents the people, and the people have brought forth distress, uncomfort, civil unrest, disobedience, and rebellion. So there was no more sea of distress. Two, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's the children of Israel. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no, neither, shall there, <coughs> neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And with that, I say peace unto the nation of Israel, and to whoever watched this video, I hope you got something out of the study. The temple of Baal, the temple of the Most High, that's what we're dealing with. So with that, I say peace on to all the brothers and sisters who support me. Keep watching. Most High willing. I'll be back to make more videos soon. And with that, I say peace to the nation of Israel and to peace to everybody who watched the video. Peace.